Thanks for tuning in to watch our trades information videos. On each of these videos, we will try to provide the same amount of information. We'll talk about the physical abilities needed to do each, each job, the type of lifestyle that might be sustainable. Different areas will get different pay, so we're going to try and just focus on would you be able to have an apartment, can you have a car loan, you know, those kind of lifestyle kind of um, things that might be associated with a different paycheck. What certificates or licenses do you need? Do you need an EMT certificate? Do you need a, a commercial driver's license? Do you need different things? So in each of these videos, we will touch on those different requirements. In all of these videos, every single tradesman has made a point to say that the work ethic that the young person can bring to the career is what will make or break their career and enable their success. So I highly encourage you to watch all of the videos that we have on these topics. See what might fit you best. There is a different career and a different trade for each and every different personality. And if you can find what fits you, it will help you to be successful in life. And that is why we are trying so hard to get all this information out to people just entering the workforce or maybe changing the workforce mid-career. We want you to be successful in life. That's our goal. So enjoy these videos. Make sure to hit subscribe because as I run across different trades, guys, I will get a different video. And if you subscribe, you will get the notification. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna talk about trades today. Um, we've been talking about um, trades with a lot of different people. You were here with us last year for our trades information panel. So Tanya, you have cosmetology license. Correct. Tell us about what you did and to get started and what's required. If a person was wanting to start being a hairstylist, what do they do? Um, you have to go to school. Um, you have to go to a tech school. There are different schools in the state of Colorado. Um, some you can actually live on campus um, and some you do not have the option to do that. So, so you have, have, to have, to have an apartment, live at home, while you okay. complete your schooling. Um, once your schooling is complete, you do have to pass the state boards through the state of Colorado, and you will get licensed through the state of Colorado. You will okay. have a practical exam and, um, and a written exam. And a written exam, yeah. Okay. So, so there's a lot of different schools, um, but I, it's my understanding that they all teach you uh, the same thing that you're going to learn, you know, like haircuts and 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 different things you learn the chemical treatments and correct you learn all the skin you know diseases that you could come in contact with okay um, things that could happen if you come in contact with blood uh, you'll learn all of that they will teach you every school will teach you what you need to know to pass the state boards okay um, so it's basically, really a thing you could if there's a school that's really expensive versus a school that's a little more budget friendly you're gonna learn, you're the, same gonna learn the same thing okay all right you're going to learn the same thing at school. Once you're out of school, um, you will learn enough to pass your state boards. Once okay. you're out of school, I definitely recommend finding a salon that offers an apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. They will teach you extra things to make you prepared to go into the field. Okay. Um, you know, maybe like just making your highlighting techniques faster. Um, mm -hmm. Just teaching you some of those tips and tricks just to be able to move into a salon setting. Okay, okay. So how long does the school part take? Is that a year? You know, it's actually a certain amount of hours. Okay, so it's, so it's however much you... However much you put into it. You can go part-time, you can go full-time. Okay. Um, I think in the state of Colorado, a full cosmetology license is 1,650 hours. Okay, and that's how many hours, that's while you're in school? Correct. Okay. You have to be in school for that, that many hours. Okay, and, and so you'll be in school, you'll be in a classroom setting, and then you'll be out also on the floor working on people's hair. Correct. Okay, and so 1,600 hours, is that what you said? I think 1,650. 1,650 in Colorado. Okay, real quick, we're gonna interject with some math. 1,650 hours required to uh, complete the cosmetology license total. If you do 40 hours a week, you can get done in 41 and a quarter weeks, 32 hours per week, 51 and a half weeks, there are 52 weeks in a year, uh, 26 hours a week, 63 and a half weeks, 
if you only go 15 hours a week, 110, uh, 110 weeks. So just as we were saying, it's how much do you put into it? So how much school are you going to go to per week? Do you need to have a job while you go to school? That'll be a decision and a factor that you'll need to consider. Mm -hmm. So other states, we would just have to say people should look that up. Right. I'm it's sure, different. I'm sure yeah, it's, it's on different. the internet somewhere. Correct. Um, and I did not do my homework to look up every state. Right. And it's different if so. you want a full Cosmo license or if you want just a hairstyling license, a barber okay. license esthetician license, manicures license. Those are all the different licenses you can get. Okay. And they're all different hour requirements. Okay. So, okay. So a, co a full cosmetology license allows you to do what? Hair, skin, and nails. Okay. And then a barber license is different how? A barber license, um, you are licensed to use a straight razor. Okay. Cosmetology license, you're not. You have to have a guard on that razor. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, um, obviously, then there was just the skin license and just the nail license. Correct. So, okay. All right. So 1650 hours and that's however much hustle you're going to put in if you're going full time, if you're going part time. Correct. Um, okay. So let's just ballpark that and say a year you could be done with that training because that's, that's feasible. I would say, yeah, I would say usually they plan on, because they do holidays, stuff like that. You know, I think it's probably 11 to 13 months. Okay. Okay. So, year, year and a half. Yeah. Okay. So, a year, year and a half, you're going to go to a school, and you're going to probably take out the, the cost of it, I'm going to assume, is in a personal loan range, not necessarily do you need to get a student loan and take on a mass amount of debt, but you could cover that with a, getting a personal loan and, say, yeah. and paying that back over a five-year period or something. Right. Right. Some, some loans, you know, better interest rates, whatnot, it could be, that could be better. But that's, that's up to whatever people work out for their finances. Right, right. So, okay, so very doable at this point. So a year and a personal loan, boom, you're, you're investing in your future, you're investing in your career. Correct. Right. Okay. So now let's talk about what does your day look like as you're, you, you, you run your business, you own your own business and you, you are in charge of your day, Correct. but that does not mean that you sit a lot. I think this is the only time I've ever seen you sitting actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, usually I'm at the salon, my first clients at 8 AM. Okay. Um, I'm usually there by 7, 15, 7, 30, get everything set up. You have to have fresh um, sanitizer every day. All that's switched out. I sanitize my stations um, at the end of the day, beginning of the day, before and, and after each client. And we're not talking virus stuff. We're talking this the stuff, the cleaning the combs and all these things that are going to touch everybody's hair. Correct. Those are cleaned mm -hmm. meticulously. Yes, before and after each client. Right. The beginning and of the so, day. And so you set out new solutions and do all that. Correct. And, okay. Yeah, every day. Right. So my first client's at 8, and usually I'm done by 7 or 8 at night. So okay. I'm standing 12 hours a day on, you know, hard cement floors. We have pads under the chairs. Um, they're not much, but yeah, I I, I think that you you stand kind of just outside of that pad. The pad doesn't look like it's big enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you have to have good shoes. Make sure and uh, take care of your legs so that you can stand for 12 hours a day. Right, yeah, stay hydrated. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely, I see a chiropractor once a month. I have mm -hmm. back issues because you're standing with your arms up like this, it puts a lot of pressure on your lower back. Um, and you're not just standing empty handed, you're holding stuff. So it's like correct. holding a five pound weight in each hand for 12 hours correct. at this right. position. Yes. Okay, yeah. so so if somebody wants to see if they could do it, they could, you know, okay, let's just, let's just stand like this for half an hour while we, you know, act, act like we're doing somebody's hair. Yes, and talk for 12 hours. <laughs> oh, you have to have a conversation. <laughs> yes, yes, so, so yes. <laughs> and, and be personable, and so correct. You are so you're standing on concrete floors, um, and obviously you know doing things with your hands. I would assume at some point during the day you're going to cut a finger or something, and and then um, that's not going to be pleasant. <laughs> right, it doesn't happen um, often, thank goodness, but it does happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're dealing with things, so you're got your you've got all this stuff going on, um, and then you're going to have to pay attention. Make sure you're not getting distracted by the conversation, but that you're getting a straight line, uh, you know, 
whatever cut the layers or whatever. You have to be able to multitask. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 That's the word I'm looking for: multitasking. And uh, and then while you're talking to this person, you're also marketing yourself. You're not you're not marketing necessarily your skills. Your skills need to be 100 percent great. Right. But you're also marketing yourself as you're kind of at this point this person's little mini vacation because they're coming in there getting their hair done yeah we call ourselves the therapist yes yes <laughs> uh, we uh we get to know people on a personal level like mm -hmm. they become family um mm -hmm. they sometimes you know things about them that their family doesn't know yet you yeah know? i mean they confide in you and you get attached to your clients you get emotionally involved sometimes mm -hmm. you know um it's hard not to when you well, you see them, you know, yeah. every two months or every three I mean, months. Four to six maybe. weeks usually, so. Yeah, so that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so while you're doing all this, you're also running your business. You're, you're paying attention. You have to consider things like, you know, do you have to pay booth rent? Do you have to buy your own tools? Um, there, there's a lot of management of finances that goes into being a hairstylist, whether you're working for a company or working for yourself. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Um, if you're working for yourself, you will have all that overhead. You will have, you know, your color expense, your back bar expense. Um, usually all of your tools, whether you're working for someone else or yourself, you're going to buy all your own tools. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their preference on what combs they like to use, what scissors mm -hmm. they like to use. Mm -hmm. It's what fits you best, what you're most comfortable with. So yeah, there's definitely overhead and expenses. Um, mm -hmm. Either way, if, if you're booth rent or if you own your own company. Right. So right. Um, there are some salons that um, are on a commission basis. So you are an employee. Mm -hmm. They would provide um, benefits, which oh, is okay. nice. Um, and they provide all your back bar, um, your and colors. Back bar? back bar is like shampoos, conditioners oh, that you okay. use on people at your back bar station. Okay. Which, um, hairsprays, any product that you're going to put on that client's hair. Okay. That's your back bar. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you, yeah, you have a lot of stuff over there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, so there's all your business expenses and, and different being a business owner versus being an employee. As somebody starting out, I would assume they're going to go for that apprenticeship that you talked about earlier. They're going to be considered in, in a, they're going to go for an employee kind of setup. Correct. Yeah. I, so. I would recommend that. Not everybody does. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I did that because that was personally best for me. Mm -hmm. I went into a salon situation. They provided, um, I had paid vacation. I had, uh, sick time. Um, so that was important to me and it was mm -hmm. an, an apprenticeship. So I got extended education before I was just thrown out on the floor. Right. So. And that's good. It teaches you, you know, you can go to a big city and learn that edgy style. You can come out to a rural salon and, and learn, you know, country kind of preferences. Um, there's different styles everywhere. Oh, I would yeah. assume you're going to learn a different technique in New York than you would in California. And you're going to, you're going to get it down under an apprenticeship. Right. So. Right. Okay. All right, so typical day, you said 7.15 to about a.m. to about 7 p.m., mm -hmm. concrete floor, doing, talking, going. Yes. Do you take a lunch break? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, if you have five minutes in between a client, you inhale something and you move on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because right. if we're not behind the chair, we're not making money. Right. We don't get paid hourly. So right. if I'm not there and I don't have a client in my chair, I'm not getting paid. Right. So it's not beneficial for me to take a lunch break. Right. So right. But you can kind of decide your hours and you can, you know, if you're needing to support a full a family, you can pound it out right. and, and, and charge a lot of dollars per hour for your cut or for your perm or curl or color or And what whatever. you charge is also dependent on location. Yes. That's so a, oh that's a great where point. we are located we can't charge as much as what they charge in Denver. It's, mm -hmm. it's all based on location. Right. Um, the cost of living. But the freedom with my schedule, because I do work for myself, has been great. Mm -hmm. You know, I can take off and go with my husband or my son if he has activities. I don't have to miss anything. Mm -hmm. So um, it's great for our family. It works well for us. Yeah. So it really fits. It fits us. Yeah. So so now let's talk about personality. Do what? Because you're talking about it fits you. And I assume it fits you mostly. Well, partly. Because your personality, you're very thick-skinned, but you're social. You know what? What are all the personality traits that you would say would be needed to be successful? 
Um, definitely thick skinned because not everything you do, everyone's going to like. Um, True. Some people want to tell you how to do your job. <laughs> well, yeah, because you know, we have so much experience. Yes, yeah, it just happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, definitely have to be social. You have to be open. You have to be caring, um, giving, I think. Uh, yeah, it just all comes with the territory. I think, you know, just you have to be willing to give somebody what they want or also provide suggestions. Like, mm -hmm. maybe this wouldn't be the best for you. You mm -hmm. know, this might look a little harsh. Or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we should start on the more conservative side. You know, mm -hmm. you kind of have mm -hmm. to read people's personality right. also. Like, sometimes people really think that they want a big change and you're like, mm, it just doesn't fit their personality. Mm -hmm. So are they going through something that mm -hmm. maybe they're really wanting, you know, like a traumatic situation and they're like, I just want to change everything. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, like in two weeks, they're really going to yeah, regret this decision. Like this. Yeah. 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 So, and they'll probably blame you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Why did you let me do this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. so you have to, you have to read people too. You have to be able to, you know, sit down and really like, okay, let's talk about this first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And, and I, I noticed, you know, so you're thick skinned. And some people, they're thick-skinned, but they don't um, hand out advice gently. So you can take a lot, but you are very gentle when you do that. You you know, I don't think you'll like that. Have you thought that through? It's um, all in the delivery of your message. Yeah. <laughs> and being customer of service. Yes. Yeah. You know. Right. Her therapist. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. Um, being thick skinned is not always easy at the beginning though, because you th might think like, oh, I did a great job. And then somebody's not happy with it. Like, uh, it breaks your heart on the inside, yeah, you know, yeah. but you can't show that on the outside. You have to be like, okay, no problem. Like, yeah. how can we adjust this? You yeah. know, what would you, you know, be more comfortable with? Right. Or, right. So sometimes it's really swallowing that knot in your throat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I would assume the apprenticeship is going to be a, a key point in that training for, for that skill. Yes. Because because you're you're whoever you're working for the mentor or the lady in the booth right next to you or or whoever it is is going to take you aside and say that was good but she didn't want that because or you know and walk you through the process so that you can do it on your own later right 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 so okay um, now let's talk about I think we've kind of covered it but we haven't actually said the words work ethic. You work past your preferred quitting time? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't blame anybody but myself for that. Yeah. Well, no, I but, think that's a good, it's a good trait. You know, as, as we're um, trying to get our kids ready to go out in the world, it, it's a transition from everything's provided for you to you have to provide everything else in, in your life. You know, you're, you woke up and I, I made your bed when you were five years old. Right. <laughs> and now you're 18 or 20 and it's all on you. So there has to be a, you know, a transition there. But this is really when they need to know the amount of work you put in is a, a, a very large, if not the only decider of what you get out. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So, so if you want, you know, those clients and you, you have to put in the time and the effort. Mm -hmm. It's not just going to be handed to you. Mm -hmm. People aren't just going to flood in off the streets because mm -hmm. you got a license and you're working here. Mm -hmm. You have to promote yourself. You have to hand out those business cards. You have mm -hmm. to say, hey, if you were for your friends and family, next time I'll give you $5 off your service. Oh, or, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, try to get people in yeah. there. You know, anything that works for you, mm -hmm. your location, you have to hustle. And mm -hmm. you have to be there. If mm -hmm. you're not there, you're, you know, you're not getting the clients in. You're not going right. to be able to, you know, establish that clientele. Right. Right. So, yeah. So, so in your salon, you might, you know, when you're starting out, you're an apprentice, you're kind of watching what people do, what works, and now you own your own salon, you have a coffee maker, you have a chair that people can sit, and while their friend's getting their hair cut, and they can still chit chat, and, and you have a lot of things in there that are just relaxing, and that, that I think helps draw people in. So it's, it's whatever in the area might work. I guess. Um. Yeah, there's um, salons, you know, that I used to work at in the city. They offer, you know, you can have a beer or a glass of wine while you're getting your hair. Oh, yes. Yeah. I have seen some of those. You know, yes. so out here I offer coffee. So yeah. <laughs> it just is what it is. Well, there's a lot of driving where we are. Yeah. <laughs> so the beer might not. I don't want to <laughs> Yeah. Not a good idea. No. <laughs> but yeah, 
so it's just whatever you because when you own your own business really you can make whatever decision this is what I'm going to charge these are the hours I'm open and and if it works for you and you're driven enough to do that I think it works and I think it works because people will see that you work hard you will give them an outstanding cut and curl and color whatever it is they're going in for mm -hmm. so when you're not there because you had to take your son to the doctor there's a lot of understanding because right. they know you are a hard worker so there's a lot of give and take yeah with clients um there's a lot of people that call and say i'm really sorry i have to reschedule you mm -hmm. know that's okay no problem like you don't want to you know be rude to them if they have to reschedule because yeah. there's going to be a day where i'm going to have to reschedule because mm -hmm. my son's sick something happened with my husband at work you know mm -hmm. i'm not feeling well you mm -hmm. know and then and they're completely understanding them they're like no problem mm -hmm. call me when you're feeling better and we'll reschedule yeah. i have yeah. to reschedule on you so mm -hmm. it's a lot of give and take yeah both ways yeah so. and, it, and it's like you were saying that relationship you get close with your clients right so all right so okay so we have covered i'm just going to re rehash here about a year for training, small level of expense compared to some career choices you could make. Um, I, I mean, I don't know the cost of all the technical school, schools and colleges and stuff, but right. I would assume this is a personal loan level of things. Yeah. Um, and so as people are starting out, they're going to, oh, we did not cover. Can you support yourself when you first start out? Or do you still need to maybe live at home for a little bit. I would say you should definitely be able to support yourself. Um, you're definitely going to have to budget. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to, you know, and it depends on what work situation you go into. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that somebody should go directly out of school, in my personal opinion, straight into a booth rent situation to where they're trying to get all of their own clients in there. Mm -hmm. um, maybe go to an established salon, where clients know the name, some other stylists can refer you some clients. Mm -hmm. um, kind of because you're building your network, correct? Your, your clientele, right? Yeah, and then if you decide, you know, a couple years down the road, I have a really good clientele, mm -hmm. then at that point, you know, move out on your own, right? But right, but that would be, and that's what you're talking about—the apprenticeship, the employee kind correct. of setup. Yeah, because you would still be making an hour wage mm -hmm. but you should definitely be able to support yourself on that you know you could have an apartment um if you had a roommate definitely that'd be better because mm -hmm. you could just save more money or have a different expense like a car payment or whatever mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. okay but definitely five years down the road you should definitely be established if you put the effort into it mm -hmm. you know you should definitely be established and and can support yourself yes and and probably have paid back that part that loan yes to pay for your school right so, so on and overall, after five years of hard work, budgeting, and, and, and really having a nose to the grindstone, you would be, you know, able to support your own apartment or a small house, um, have a nice car. I mean, you know, we're not talking, within reason. you know, <laughs> luxury models or whatever, yes. but, you know, a decent working, nice car, um, and, and be well on your own. Definitely. So, compared to... Some people that might still be training after five years, you're established right. and experienced. Yeah, and on your way to a, a career, like it's gonna be your career, so. Yeah. Well, awesome. Cool, good option. Yeah. I like it. All right, well, thank you for talking with us, Tanya, and yes, we will. Okay, thanks for watching our video. I hope you loved it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and you will get notified when we have new stuff.